Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and I am going to bring you a really fun little project today. Before I do that, you can see I'm dressed in red, white, and blue. You can't see my red shoes and my white pants, but we are celebrating the Memorial Day week here, and of course we want to say a real big shout out to all of the veterans, uh, men and women. We thank you so much for doing so much for our country. We are celebrating today with doing a fun little vi video for you. So I want to get started with showing you some notions, some threads, and this beautiful new Icon 2. We had a great seminar this last weekend, an event to launch the Icon 2. It was with Karen Charles. She's just a phenomenal educator. And if you guys ever get a chance, we're going to bring her back again next year. You'll watch our website to see when she's coming. She was not only just a um, wonderful person that loves FOF, she was, and Viking too, she has both, but her icon too is, I can tell, something that she really loves. And she did a presentation to teach everyone in this um, class about this placemat. You can see I'm going to hold it up a little bit at an angle, or maybe this way I'll turn it over so you can see the back. It's really kind of fun. And what she did on this, um, first of all, she let me take the class. It was really fun because um, I, normally I'm there and I'm listening and taking notes, but I don't usually get to sew. So it was really a, a great, we're trying to keep our event classes a little bit smaller so that you really have the opportunity to work with these projects and really focus on the machine to see if it's something that you might like for the future for yourselves. Well, there are a lot of people that ended up purchasing this machine. So Bev, I know I'm going to forget somebody, Kathy, Linda, um, oh, they were, there were six people. So Betsy, um, another uh, Marcy. I mean, it was just an amazing event because people saw what this machine can do. It has um, taken over from the Icon when it truly is its own machine. And I'm going to show you just one little thing that I thought was so marvelous. I have done the, the uh, laser on some other machines, but I just wanted to show you some of the um, updates and the improvements that they made because I think it'll make you see that we not only ha can draw if we're doing bindings, because I know bindings are always hard for people, but you also can um, use a laser light to uh, do your binding. So I'm going to show you something real quick. But before I get into that, I'd like you to focus on these, um, this placemat because I want to show you what the technique was. Does anyone out there know what these are called? Or I'm pointing my fingers. Can you tell? Do you know what they're called? You're right. Floating stitches. Bev, I, did I mention Bev's name? She's so excited. <laughs> She's got just a wonderful machine. And she had an Icon 1 before, but... Uh, by the second day, you said, oh, I have to have this machine. And it was so fun to show you, you know, what it could do differently. And what we do with a floating stitch, we put the two layers together. We sew it along the edge, and there's a wonderful foot that uh, holds it real straight for you. You hold it, pull it open, and then you have this beautiful floating stitch. And there's, oh, I can't even tell, there's a gazillion different um floating stitches. This is one that kind of looks like a little cross. This one looks like a little arrowhead. But did you notice something else that we did in this um, placemat that's really kind of cool? There were about 12 or 15 techniques that we used, and this placemat was truly to teach you how to do some of these techniques so that you could have a home, not have to use your long arm. If you have one, you could do very simple ones with using your machine because what is this? It's all quilted in the hoop. It's called computerized quilting and what was great about it is we took their new projector which is right, um, you're going to see the machine here in a moment um, where I'm, I'm putting my finger under here you can see that is a light. I don't have it on right now but when I turn it on you'll see that that's a projector. There's a camera in there, there's a scanner, it's just an amazing thing. When I first saw the machine, I will have to tell you, because I have other brands that I thought are really good, and they still are really good, but I didn't think they had quite come up to the standards. Well, they have. Um, and again, I'll show you on the screen so you'll see a couple of things that are just amazing. So getting back to where we were with this placement and the techniques, 
we took the placement and we scanned. We, we put this in a hoop before the binding came on. And then we scanned these designs. There are oh, a ton of different types of quilting patterns that are in there. But there's also something else called, and I don't know if you can see this on there, My MySoNet. And the My MySoNet is one of the best kept secrets. Well, we're gonna make sure people are really knowing about it. That's the ribbon embroidery, we did that too. See the little ribbon stitch along here, isn't that wonderful? And you can see there's apps here for your computer, for your iPad, for your phone, uh, or your Android, or whatever it is that you're using. And these designs can all be pulled up on your phone. We had, um, actually my machine was there, and uh, Karen was up in the front, and she had signed into her MySonet account, which gives you thousands and thousands of designs. And it's probably one of the best pricing I've seen in a long time. Um, you get the first uh, two or three months, 60 days, I think, for uh, free. And then you can sign up for a year and you get you only pay $499 and that's a whole year. If you don't want to do that, there's a monthly subscription too. And I'm not going to go into all that now, but I just wanted you to be aware that there's so many wonderful changes in this industry that are making it so much easier for us. So you can see there's monthly payments too. And that was with the my Sonet because I believe she pulled these two designs from there. And what Karen did, she was up in the front of the classroom, I was in the back, and she just clicked on the design. All of a sudden, I looked at my screen, and there was the quilting design right on it. Um, it was, it's just an amazing thing that they're doing. They're absolutely able to put it right on your screen. Then what we did, we, the hoop was already hooped. We touched the um, uh, projector and the scanning part of the projector and scanned the entire piece. And then we just moved into position where we wanted to put the quilt uh, patterns. And you can see the back is just as pretty as the front. I mean, the quilting, and this is done with black thread, which quite frankly, <laughs> I was a little, you know, they, they just go that extra mile because they want you to see the, the worst possible scenario because usually black thread will show every mistake. Well, you can see there's no mistakes, which is just a credit to her. Then the other technique we used, well, we used a lot of them, we did these this is a nine millimeter machine, so we had these beautiful, beautiful stitches, perfectly straight, perfectly straight running down the um, the pieces because of the fact that we had the laser and the projector, and the, I put the grid on, and we can make the grid any size we want, make it smaller or bigger. So I put it exactly to the size, and you had two lines following right down the edge. So it was very, very simple to do. Then this, anybody know what this is? Can you see it up close? I didn't cut it, this I did. So there, you gotta bear with me. I was called out about 15 times and that's only an excuse. <laughs> but the um, this is an applique and I didn't cut it quite close enough. What's great about the applique, it did an outline stitch and you can put it anywhere. I chose to put it in the center even though I had some design on it already. I thought it was kind of pretty. And then you uh, the outline stitch, you, you put your fabric over it so you know you're covering the outline stitch. It'll stitch it again, and a second time you trim, and then you go over with whatever design that you choose, and it will you know, make it perfect. It, it is just truly amazing what these machines are doing, because this has got something called stitch intelligence, and I know there's another name for it. Let's see what they actually call it, exclusive. It's actually called exclusive stitch intelligence. So. And what that means, because when I first heard that, I thought, oh, well, it's just another term. It isn't. It, when you put this foot on or you put something else on, it's going to tell you exactly what to do. It's going to show you. It, uh, it knows what, what foot you should use with what fabric. It, it's truly amazing some of the technique that we are doing with this machine that I've never thought before it could be done. One of the things that I think is so great about Thoth is that, uh, and they've proven it in this new machine because I actually bought one. And you know I have four other top of the line machines. So if I bought another one, there's gotta be something pretty spe special about it because I have to buy them too. And the reason that I personally bought them, I love their embellishment attachments, which we haven't got yet. But in the meantime, I am learning about, the ribbon attachment is just phenomenal. But I'm learning about the, the great internal stitching and sewing that this machine will do with this built-in IDT. 
don't know if you can see that, Nick, if I'm on the camera here. I'll move my foot out. But do you see how I just click that on? I'll do it again. Let me do it. Take it off. You can see it's off now. Now, I know that I have a foot for IDT. You can see that opening. Now, there's an opening in this quilting foot, which I just love. And you, you could just use one finger to put it on, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing there. Or you can take it right off, put it right on. You can see all around it. You don't have a big clunky foot there. It's very, very, very easy to see. And that's what, you know, is really an amazing thing when you're doing some of these internal stitches. So this, of course, was all done without the binding. Then once you're, you know, you really like what you've got there, I press it, I square it up, and then I did something that is in one of our videos, our prior videos, and Nick, if you could put that on the screen. I've had many people tell me over and over that that was one of the most helpful things they've done because if you're not doing... It'll be flashing on the top? Oh, good. Okay, <laughs> so you'll really see it. And I, I wanted you to know that I'm the same way. If I'm not, you know, say I've done 10 different other projects, it's not a sewing project. It might, I mean, it's not a quilting project. It might be sewing, it might be embroidery. And then I go back to binding a quilt. I have to stop and think again. Well, gee, now, how am I doing my mitered corners? Am I going to hand sew it? Am I going to do a decorative stitch on it? And if I am, how am I going to finish that binding off at the end? That's the one that everybody always has the most trouble with. Once you get the reminder, it'll come back like a little light bulb and you'll be able to finish it up. What I did on this one is I sewed, if you can see this, I sewed it on the back first and I turned it to the front. And the reason I did that, because I wanted to do a decorative stitch. This is a table mat that will, or a little table runner that'll be in the wash quite a bit. And when I do my hand stitching, um, usually I do that on my real good quilts. And they get washed too, of course, but this is going to be very, very sturdy. I don't know, Nick, if you can see, I actually have a piece um, that I've done a sample with. So let me get that piece for you. So this is the practice piece. You always want to take a little piece of your fabric. I hope you always have a little extra somewhere. And do a practice with your binding before you actually put it onto your um, quilt or your table mat or whatever it is that you're doing. And you can see what I did because <clears throat> I wanted to try a couple of different types of embroidery stitches. And I don't want anything real thick because my binding is quite thick. I left the binding and the batting in there. I don't ever trim that away because I like to have some substance to my binding. This particular one was two and a half inches because it's a placemat and I wanted the color to show from the applique to the uh, binding color. And you can see it really contrasts very nice with the other colors that are in the, the placemat or the table runner. <clears throat> but I, what I do is I try different stitches and I, like I said, I sewed it on the wrong side and then I turn it over to the front when I'm doing decorative stitches. Not if I'm going to do hand stitching. If I do hand stitching, I would turn it back to the wrong side and then I would hand whip it. But on this particular one, I did the regular stitch length. Then I tried stretching it out, which I didn't like. I thought it needed to be a little bit closer. And then I continued it on a different uh, length. And you can just, this is all personal preference. It's all what you like. Then I tried, I, lo I love this little stitch where it goes off the edge and back on the, uh, the um, binding. Let me see if I can get that so you can see it. <clears throat> see, it goes off, and then it goes back on, it goes off, and it goes back on. It's almost like a little zigzag with a stepping step in there. I tried another one. Um, this is kind of like a, um, uh, it's, it's almost like a zigzag with an extra bump in it. <laughs> and that, uh, I didn't like that quite as nicely. So again, it's what you prefer. And you want to try it because you want to figure out what stitch length, if there's a width that you might like better. I left this the length. The, the wonderful thing about the stitch intelligence, it tells you what really looks good when you're using this particular foot. And when they have a, um, um, a foot that is, um, I think I've got it right here. It's got a little guide on it and it's a great foot for running along the edge. And I believe it's called a, I um, should know exactly what it's called, but I don't. It's a, when I open up the screen, it'll tell me right away. And it just, it, it's kind of riding on one edge, which is just great. 
and then the marker is in the middle. So you're going to get on both sides that zigzag on the front and on the back. So it, I mean, on the part of the binding and off the binding, part of the binding and off. It's just a really fun thing to do. And you can see I've left the binding piece up here so you can see without it. And then um, I have my layers of batting in there too. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I like after I've done something like this is to, I, I actually take these wonder clips. Um, I love these if you're gonna be sewing over an edge. If you haven't tried these before, Nick, I don't know if you can get that real close, that, um, you see that round circle there? You can see how it's literally going under the foot and it's uh, open here. It's, you're not sewing on it. You're just going over it and it's holding this piece right in place. And that's good sometimes when you have a wider piece and you wanna do the straight stitch. When I went to the fold over, um, let's see if I've got my little wonder clips here. I know I have a whole bag of them. Let, let, me, um, let me grab a box because I want you to see it. These are the little mini point clips. I absolutely love them because they've got a real tiny little point. And especially when you come up to your mitered corner, this is when you really can get that clip right in there. Um, I actually don't mind taking these. I could use a, another one myself <laughs> if you want me to take them off. Boy, they are in here heavy. Um, and the great thing about these is that they're gonna be on sale for you. So if you are, um, you want to use your paper scissors, not your, um, what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> you would definitely not want to do what I'm doing, but I do have a lot of, of uh, embroidery scissors that I love. And I think um, this four inch, not for the paper that I'm doing here, but for the um, any of the garments that you're going to be sewing, any of the quilts that you're going to be doing, it comes with a nice little box and you can just flip it up. And I'm gonna show you, let's see if I can pick one that's got a good color so you can see it. Maybe yellow will show up. And you can see that tiny little point and look what happens when I put that right on the edge, right on the edge of that miter. Now, if you are sewing this way, you want the flat side down. If you are sewing from this side, you want the flat side on the other side. And again, I'll put another color on this side so you can see it. And see how nice that is? I mean, it's just a little point. And it, then you don't have those big, heavy clips all over. Um, I did space them about this amount of space, I'll show you, because I think it's, now this has all been pressed. I do not press my binding, by the way, until I'm finished with my quilt, ever. I don't, I try, you never say ever, right? But I try not to do that. I don't like the crease on the edge um, because you might move it a little bit and you wanna have it so that the, um, the press, the good and clean press after you're finished with the whole project, you turn it from the wrong side, you press it and then turn it back to the right side. But this is about the size of, you know, the, the length of what I pin them for. Yes, you can hold it as you're going through, but this way you see there's no puckers whatsoever. There's no little, all of a sudden you end up with extra fabric uh, when you use these clips. And like I said, they'll be on our website and they, they'll be in our email too and they'll be a special price for you. Oh, I'm glad I had to open these up because I can use another box of these. All right, so now what I'd like to get started, the next step is to show you one quick little thing um, about each of the notions that I used. I feel so strongly about when you're doing a project to have the right tools. Think about a carpenter. Would they ever not have the right, do they have one hammer and one screwdriver? Have you ever looked at your husband's or your somebody's tool, maybe even your own? You've got, you know, a whole array of different sizes and they all look like they do the same thing, but they don't. Rulers, when I get into, when I'm using a, a you know, a um, table runner like this, I'd like to have a small ruler. A three inch ruler by, I believe this is 12, is just great, or even a smaller one. So that you can, when you're going into measuring some of these areas, it's real important to have. Um, last time that I did a video with you, I showed you the square, 12 inch square. I love that ruler, but you don't need it for this one. This particular, unless you were using it for squaring up. This ruler has got the, you know, the backing on it, so it holds it nice and tight, and it's just a great one. 
the right marking pens. And I'm going to show you something with, this is Alex Anderson's newest marking pen. And it's, um, it's the self eraser marker. I can't tell you how much I love this. I did something when um, we put this in the hoop, the educator came along with this and just did all kinds of marks. And I went, oh my gosh, you put that mark on. Well, look at what we did afterwards. I took them all off because it's so easy to do. If you can get that up close, Nick, I wanted to leave this one on so you could see it. Look at how that's coming off immediately. Yeah, it's just right there. You can see now it's a little wet, but not much. Mark it again. Oh, you want them? Well, no, it was already marked. And what's really amazing, now that's where the marking was. It was a big, big purple mark. Well, what happens with these um, marking pens, and you do always want to try it on something first to make sure you, it's not going to be permanent, but you want to try and get that marking off right away. Well, I forgot about this. And two or three days later, I'm seeing it there, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, I forgot to take it off. I just took that end of the marking pen and put it across. And it's Alexis. She came up with this idea. It's just a fabulous eraser. And we're going to put this on sale for you, too. I thought, you know what? You're watching this. You're spending your time, and you're supporting the store. So I definitely want to do some sale items for you. Um, I love these bobbins. I've talked about them before, but these are the new Faf bobbins for the icon and you, if you know much about my sewing you know I always mark them I haven't these are new I've just bought them but I'm I put icon 2 on here and then I put whatever weight I've been using a lot of embroidery thread or a lot of quilting thread I'll put a hundred weight I'll put orafil I'll put 60 over 2 because that might be a bobbin weight thread I'm using and I always use these things for it the um, always I get a question Never fails because I've probably forgotten to tell you what size needle do you use in that machine? Well, the, this is the best way to buy the pack, and they are on sale also. And there is a, um, this is a universal, an embroidery, a denim, and a quilting needle. When I'm doing my um, binding, I use, and, and um, you know, when I put this binding on, what I'm going to show you right now, is I'm using a quilting needle and I use the finest I can because I'm actually going to do the binding, the uh, squared up pieces of the uh, binding piece itself. And the quilt needles are absolutely fabulous. And I try to go to the 75 before I go to a 90. <clears throat> Buy these because they're a great sale item. This, I don't know how I could do without this. This is the Nifty Notions. This stiletto is really what I consider to be one of the easiest ones to use. It just pops right out. You can put it in and you can get right under the foot when you're doing your uh, piecing. Now let's go over to the machine and I want to show you exactly how I use this laser part of the machine with the projector. Looking at the screen here, you can see everything in orange that's showing. I do have a quarter inch quilting foot with the IDT on it on, on the machine. It's showing me that that's the recommended one. Then it's showing you also that the LED work light, I've, I've dimmed that down because it's, I can see this perfectly, but unfortunately the camera can't see it quite as well as you can. So I just changed it. Normally I wouldn't have it this low. This is just an on. The brightness is all the way up. I have a color background that I can go in and change at any time. And then I have all kinds of grids that I can change. When you go down to the grid color, you can see this is on, and I haven't made it, I, I even have a color wheel where I can go in and change the colors of the line. I can make it longer, or shorter, thicker, if I want a thicker line, but I'm fine with what I have now. You can see, um, I've moved over to the screen. Now, again, I can see this very, very well, but the camera is not gonna pick it up as well. Look at what happens when I put this on this piece of white. It's just amazing how it's at an angle, and I'm going to sew from that angle, but before, and again, if you've looked at any of my videos, you can see I'm going to put that needle down. I'm going to push that fabric all the way up to the um, point of the needle, and then I'm just going to sew. And it'll go right off the edge. I'm following the angle right off. That's all there is to it. Then I'm just going to go ahead and snip it, 
take my two pins out. You wouldn't really need a pin, but I wanted you to see it. And look at how perfect that is. Absolutely. I'll do it with my finger, and I've now had a nice mitered piece. Again, when you come to the end of the, the binding, you're going to use this same foot. You want two pieces to go together, and you're going to, you don't want to just even them up here. You're going to want to be able to do what? If you go to my video that I did in the past, you will see that you will have a little piece you cut off of the end. Doesn't matter how wide you cut that piece. All we're looking for is the width of the binding. Now I know this binding is two and a half inches, so this will be the overlap. It'll be two and a half inches overlap. You can't go right up to the edge. You're gonna overlap over like that, and then what you will do is that's where the, the cut piece will be. Again, it's hard to see it right from here, but I know that if you go to that video that's showing, it'll show you how to finish off your binding too. I hope this video has given you uh, just a little smattering of fun of the ideas that we are doing with the new technology. The stitch intelligence is just amazing. Don't forget about our wonderful sales that we have going on with the Icon 2. We are having a wonderful, wonderful um, month where we are putting it out there at a great special. I have some packages that I wasn't able to show you earlier. This. We are giving, as long as they last, this embroidery attachment there. I mean, this ribbon embroidery, it's almost gone. I wish I could open these up. They're just phenomenal. There's a, a wonderful sewing and embroidery kit. There is a uh, quilter's kit that is just amazing that has all kinds of different, uh, in fact, our instructor this weekend wanted one of these. <laughs> she said it has that locking um, mat that you have in here that's just a really cool thing. Last but not least, and important for me to mention, the one I'm sewing on is the, they call it Dusk, and it actually has a fabric cover in the front. It's that space age material that never wears out. We have one left of the Dusk. We have, I believe, one winter white that may have been taken by the time you get this. And there might be, I think that's it, there might be a Northern Lights, but that I'm uh, not 100%. And that, if you know anything about the limited editions, they made them, they, people ordered them ahead of time. I ordered mine. I had the Northern Lights, which is kind of a beautiful, bright, kind of bluish green. Um, it sounds awful, I know, but it's just gorgeous in the light. So, and then we have the Plum Aurora, and that has become probably the one that everybody wants the most. So. Think about it. Give us a call. Are gone they're, once they're gone, yeah, they're gone. Once those limited editions are sold, you'll never get another one. So they are very valuable. It's one of the reasons I chose one. Thanks again, everybody. Hope to see you next week.